And today, I want us to look at our quality service. Because every day you walk around, people are observing you. And they're checking your service. When you're on your job, this is what they're doing. They're checking your service. They want to see, you know, I went to the, uh, I went through the line and, and this young man, he was just so excited to be there. I mean, he, he took my order and he was, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, I'm not used to people working in fast food just being happy about being in the drive through I'm like, I didn't tip this brother. Like, he is excited about working at Guthrie's. But do you walk with the joy of the Lord? Or do you walk around the Lord with being always complaining? People walked into the church today, guess what? They were checking the service of the ushers. Did they look like they were sucking on lemons or did they greet me? Did they say hello and how did they, did they, did they smile or what they look at me? When they walked in, they sat down, they went, they looked at the praise team, they looked at Ray like, is he up there? Praise is what you like. Like, he up there, do he, he, he believe what he's saying? The quality service, they're checking everything that you do. But watch this, I don't know people checking you. But God is checking your service. God is checking your service. Romans 12 and 1 says this. He says, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Watch this. Which is your reasonable service. When you close your eyes at night, when I close my eyes at night, you know, over the last few weeks I've been saying, God, how'd your boy do today? <laughs> you give me, show me the song. Some days I look like, God, how did you do that well? Did, 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 did I, was I a living sacrifice? Did I go out and tell somebody about Jesus? Did I live the best that I know how to live? Because we all want to make mistakes because we're not perfect. But did I do my best? Yeah. I didn't intentionally try to hurt them. I didn't intentionally not try to give to anybody. But every night when you close your eyes, you need to do a self-examination and say, God, how did I do today? Because guess what? God is checking your service. Are you giving five stars in your service to God? Are we as a ministry, are we giving five stars? God is looking for some people who will step out the boat while everybody else is staying in the boat. Yes. He's looking for some people who will go the extra mile. Yes. Yes. God is looking for someone that says, I'll launch out into the deep while everybody else is safe on the seashore because I know when I go deep, God, whenever you go deep, God gives a little deep. Yes. God is looking for someone who knows that I, I've been called to be different. Yes. Yes. I've been called to make a difference. So today I want to look at our quality service. I want to look at our reviews. Mm -hmm. One of the first things uh, on the checklist uh, at, at, at the, the BNB, they always ask the first thing. They said, rate their check-in process. And I want to let you know you have to rate your check-in process. What do you mean, preacher? So when they say rate your check-in process, it gives some examples. Did they did it look like what they say it was going to look like? Was it misleading? When people check in, mm -hmm. are you the same person that you are at church? Yeah. Yeah. That you are when you're at home? Come on, Come on. When people check in to you, are you the same person uh, when you're around church folk than when you're around the folks at your job? Are you the same person right. when you check in? All right. Also, it says, were well, you able to check in at the time that you request it. Are you responsive when people call on you? Can they count on you? All right. When we look at the text, y'all say, what does God do with the text? When we look at the text, watch this. In Acts chapter 4, the apostles were arrested for preaching the gospel, healing the sick. And after they healed this brother, they put him in jail, but they were released. And they told them, we're going to release you, but stop preaching the gospel. Stop healing the sick. Acts chapter 5 verse 12 says this. 
through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done uh -huh. among the people. Yeah. I need to say it again with the dog it. Acts chapter 4, they went to jail for preaching the gospel, uh -huh. killing the sick. They were told, don't do it again, but we're going to release you, but don't do it again. In the next chapter, it says that through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, which lets me know, in spite of what they were told not to do, they kept on going. In spite of the opposition, they kept checking in and healing the sick. In spite of the, of, of, of the noise and the child and people telling them, you don't preach the gospel, don't heal. It said they kept on doing it anyway. Can you say, I'm going to serve God in the hard time? I'm still going to serve God when storms come my way. Because I understand that the devil only threatens what threatens him. When you start making some noise for the kingdom, the devil don't like it. That's why I tell you all the time when the road gets rough, don't pull over and quit. Right? Buckle your seatbelt. Keep on rolling. Keep on praising God. Keep on going. Because sooner or later, your breakthrough is going to come. When things are going the way, you gotta keep checking it. I'm still going to church. I'm checking it. I'm, I'm still, I'm still gonna praise God because I know that somehow, some way, I'm gonna speak life into my situation. We're gonna get through it. You gotta keep checking it. Now, I feel the need to tell some of y'all in here today: Don't let folk talk you out of serving God. I, don't let folk talk you out of serving God. Some of us are listening to folk who ain't doing nothing but the kingdom of God. Right, 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 right. We're listening to folk at home right now. They ain't they stuck, God. They ain't doing nothing to better themselves. And yet we'll let them talk us out of our blessing. Right, right. Don't, don't go over there. Don't go to that place. Don't give to that. Don't, don't, don't help that person. Man, you're missing out of your blessing because you're listening to the wrong people. Yeah. Keep And you check in the park. Uh -huh. That's something about you. So I have one star, two star, three stars. And guess what? If you don't have five stars, it's all right. Now you know we, I need you to do better yeah. and check in. Okay. The next category that's on the, on the review list is communication. Yeah, yeah. Communication. If we're going to have excellent service, we've got to have excellent communication. It says, were they friendly? So were they helpful? Were they respons responsive when you reached out to them? Were they proactive? And in chapter 4, verse 31, it says that when they got out of jail, when they released them, it says that the apostles began to pray. The people of God came together and they prayed for boldness. They begin to communicate. They begin to talk to God. And it says, and when they prayed, verse 31, the place where they were assembled together, it said that they were shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. I came to tell you, where there is prayer, yeah. there is power. Yes. Where there is prayer, there is power. Where there is communication with God, there is power. Miracles are accompanied by communication. When I look throughout my Bible, it says, the ten levels, they began to communicate. They said, Lord, have mercy on us. And they got their healing. When I, when I look at the security, he said, my daughter is sick. Can you come by my house? It was because he communicated with Jesus that his daughter was here. When I look at Mary, Martha, knowing that Lazarus was sick, she sent word to Jesus. She communicated with Jesus. Because you won't communicate with him. Y'all don't worry. You found out because you asked me. God, come see about me. God, come to my house and check on my kids. Check on my wife. Check on me, God. Check on the church. Check on the land. You're going to learn how to communicate. Yes. Communicate with the Lord. There's power in your communication. 
Go ahead and raise yourself. One star, two star, three star, four star, five stars. The third thing is this. It says rate the cleanliness. Is the bathroom clean? Is the furniture spotless? Is the house free of clutter? All I heard when I, when, I, when I saw that, I said, you know, is my life free of clutter? I know, I know. Yes, is your life free of junk? Is it free of mess? Is it free of drama? See, many of us, we got our lives are just messy because we got so much drama going on. Right, we right, got right, so right, much right, drama. Right, we got so much right, drama right, in our lives. Right, 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 we don't have cleanliness. Look at the text. The text tells us this. I love it. Peter and the apostles. They kept checking in. They kept preaching. They kept healing. They kept they kept laying hands on folks and people getting saved and delivered. They kept they kept communicating and, and the, it says the believers kept being added to the church. They kept coming to the Lord. And verse fifteen says this so that they brought the sick out into the streets. And laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on them. Lord have mercy. I shouted when I read. I thought, I thought y'all would get excited about this. It said that, that, that they were that, that the Peter and the apostles, they, they were they were praying so hard. God was all over them that they started laying folk out in the street that when, when they walked by, when Peter walked by, that if his shadow. Yeah would just cover them, they might be healed. Yeah. Now, some people just might skip over some of this stuff, but I, I thought about this thing. Peter, the same Peter who denied Jesus three times, the same Peter that was hiding with Jesus was looking for his disciples, the same Peter who denied Jesus now has such an anointing on him that his shadow is healing for him. Be careful how you walk. Because there's somebody 
know. Why can't I wash away my sins? It didn't say coming to church. It didn't say giving, giving money. It didn't say praise and worship. It said, what can I wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He is the only one that can clean you up and turn you around. And that's what I want to say. Lord, he made you clean.
when they try to shout in your face, he'll open it. And anybody say, God, I thank you for the open doors that I'm yet to experience. God, I thank you for opening doors that I can Yesterday, and I was reading First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine. And God, He, he said, "You are my fellow co-workers." And it was just something about God saying, "I'm His co-worker." That, that means, God, I'm working with you. A God that sit high and look low. A holy God. Yes. A God that, you know, I can't touch him with my hands. I can't, I can't reach him with my hands. God said, you're my co-worker. We're working together for the kingdom of God. And that just spurts something on the inside of me and say, God, I gotta do better. I'm not happy with one star. I'm not happy with two, three. God, I'm going to give you my best. Because I got the best coin. God is on my side. Matter of fact, he said, I can be better than that. He said, I'm on the inside of you. I'm working within you to do the work of the Lord. Today, I just want to encourage you. Serve the Lord. I know we don't get excited. We don't. You know, we don't, get, we don't shout about serving God. Because at the end of the day, nobody really wants to serve in the sense of nobody wants to labor. Serving is hard work. That's why he said, you must be a living sacrifice. It's sacrificial when you're serving. I encourage you, be in the right location. Communicate with the Lord. Cleanliness. What should I do? Right. Every time Thank you. they try to put the apostles in a box, God opened another door. Right. Right. Every time they oppressed them, yeah. He gave them a greater anointing. More folk got sick. More folk got delivered. More folk came to the body. Right? They said, they kept saying, and, 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 the added, and the Lord added, and the Lord added, and the Lord added. When we do what we're supposed to do, yes. the Lord will act. Oh, yes. right. When we sow, when we give, when we plant, when we want, the Lord will act. Yes. So my question today, are you giving quality service? Right. Is God pleased with your reasonable service? Jesus, Jesus. Father God, today we thank you. We thank you for this word. Because God, we truly want to do things in the spirit of excellence. Not just in one area, but in all areas of our life. We want to do things in the spirit of excellence in our giving. Forsaking out the assembly of the saints. Coming together with the fellowship with one another. God, on our jobs, God. Even if we're not where we want to be, God, we're going to give our best believing that you're going to open the door for us to be where we want to be. God, we're going to do things of spirit excellence in our calling. God, I find that complacency in our people. I find that, oh God, the spirit of comfort where people just are just comfortable where they are, God. Disrupt their being comfortable. Stirring the gift of the inside of us. God, have your way in us. That we will present ourselves daily as a living sacrifice. Even when we get tired, God, remember what you did for us on Capitol's cross. You could have came off that cross, but you stayed right there. Because God, you had Brandon in mind, you had GLF in mind. 
God, you had these people in mind to remind us, don't quit, but to keep on going. Because trouble don't last always. But God, one day, I will say it in the sun. I want to hear you say, well done. By good and faithful servant. Yes. God, you're not going to talk about what we gave. You're not going to talk about all our accomplishments. God, you're not going to talk about our achievements and our certificates and our degrees and our titles. God, you're not, not going to talk about none of that. God, you want to say, well done. Yeah, yeah. Not faith. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So God, today, we make a vow to serve you. Yes, Lord. While it's still there. Yes, God. Before our name is called. Yes. That God will continue to sing that temple. Yes. Build up those rewards in heaven. Because yes. we know what got after this life. There's eternal life. Yes. That's what we would spend all eternity on. Yes, yes. So God, we, we build up heavenly treasures. Lord. Oh, yes. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
godly and I got you. When you do what you're supposed to do, God says, I'll do what I'm supposed to do. I've made so many promises to you, but you have to do your end of our And it starts with giving. Amen. So we ask that you do that today. Give me a Yeah. Wow. 